December 4th was a big day for Proxmox scenes everywhere. Version 1.0 of Proxmox Data Center Manager was officially released. The 1.0 milestone is a big achievement for PDM and for Proxmox server solutions, so it's only fitting that we dig in, see where this often called vCenter killer is, and what features 1.0 brings. Let's get to it. Hey there, home lovers, self hosters, IT pros, and engineers. Rich here, if you remember the video I did back when PDM was at version 0.9, we talked about how it was already a fascinating peek into the future of managing multi-cluster Proxmox environments. But it was still early, a prototype, a sketch of what it could become. Well, now we've hit version 1.0 and Proxmox has officially declared this the first stable, fully supported release. And boy oh boy, a lot has changed. So let's dig in, walk through everything that's new, everything that's improved, what might still be missing, and why it finally feels like Proxmox's real answer to enterprise-grade multi-cluster management. Let's hit the major headline features first. First off, PDM is now considered stable, released as 1.0 GA. Second, PDM now features full integration with Proxmox backup server. Third, PDM now features customizable dashboards. Fourth, PDM now features remote shell access to your nodes direct from the UI. Fifth, PDM now features unified update management across all clusters and servers. Sixth, PDM now has improved authentication and access control for Active Directory, LDAP, OpenID, and API tokens. Seventh, PDM now has better SDN, EVPN visibility, and fabric status. And eighth, PDM now brings dozens of UI and workflow refinements. Now let's break these down with some demos. First off, Proxmox Backup Server is now a first-class citizen inside of PDM. PDM can now show all PBS remotes, all of their data stores, backup snapshots, their verification status, full storage utilization, performance metrics, and you're able to see the retention and prune results via tasks. This completely changes PDM's usefulness for anyone running backups across multiple clusters. Instead of logging into each individual PBS instance, now you have a full top-down view of all backups across your entire infrastructure, which is great for keeping an eye on multi-site and multi-cluster PBS deployments, DR planning, and cross-cluster restore visibility. What's next? The last beta of PDM only had a singular dashboard, but starting with PDM 1.0, you now have the ability to create customized views that let you decide what information is important to you. You can create views based on specific clusters or remotes, specific storage or PBS endpoints, VMs and container tags, network components, SDN zones, and even more specific metrics. And you can assign different views to specific users, which is super useful for different teams that only need specific data. I may or may not be on record crapping all over the PDM PVE user experience because of how crowded and inefficient the dashboards and user experience are. From the start, I've been really impressed with PDM's UI UX approach, and custom dashboards brings that one step further. Imagine using PDM at work and creating custom dashboards for your help desk. Give them exactly the information that they need to support the systems that are critical for them. Good stuff. Moving on. Version 1.0 brings direct shell access to all of your remotes from a single button click in PDM. I'm happy this is here, and again, it's one more step closer to the centralized vCenter killer for Proxmox we all deserve. Little shortcuts like this mean you'll spend less time bouncing between PDM and either your PVE or PBS endpoints, and that's a good thing. The GA release of PDM now brings a centralized update section that allows you to get a complete picture on updating your nodes and clusters. The new UI element gives views on all available package updates, node versions, PBS updates, out-of-date systems, and subscription status. This will be a big time saver for people who want a single view page for all update activities you need to manage on your nodes. I complained in the last video about exactly this thing. PDM needs a central location for updates and patch management, and we finally got it. While there's still a long way to go here, we'll talk more about that at the end of the video, I'm really excited that they've listened to the community and are putting a focus on patch management in PDM. What's next? There has been a ton of UI polish and workflow improvements to PDM in version 1.0. For example, you can now drill down even deeper into your container and virtual machine workloads and see even greater detail than in the past. Check this out. If you select a workload in one of your remotes and head over to the right window pane, you now have a config tab that provides you with a ton of information about the workload in question, like resources, network, and further options. And for VMs, you get detail about the virtual hardware configured and further config options as well. Nice. Also, as I previously mentioned, they put a lot of effort into improving the authentication and access control features for PDM, and in SDN and EVPN, they've improved the display for SDN zones and fabrics, added the ability to query EVPN IP VRF and MAC VRF, added more accurate pending status reporting, and overall just cleaned up the navigation and summaries for SDN and EVPN. 
The version 1.0 release of PDM is really showing some fantastic growth and improvements. But it's not all roses and sunshine here. There are plenty of things that it falls short on. So let's talk about what's still missing, what they're still not doing well, and some of the biggest gotchas that I hope to see fixed in the future. First off, one of the biggest issues that I have with PDM is the fact that there is still no direct way to manage a workload from within PDM itself. Sure, you can do basic workload management like stop, start, and migrate workloads under certain circumstances, but you can't pop a console for that workload or get to a shell if it's a container. The best thing you can do is click the link that will open up your PVE's website to open the console. They also don't give you any ability to manage a workload's config either. And before you say something like, that's not what PDM is for, Stop. If you can control the running state, migrate a workload, and view its individual configuration, then it should be expected that you'd be able to manipulate those features as well. Next, let's talk about PBS integration. They've done a really good job getting PBS represented in PDM, but it's still kind of a mess. For example, if you open up a PVE remote and click on Data Center, then head over to Remote Tasks on the right, you get a full list of the tasks that have occurred on that node. Pop over to a PBS remote and there's no such thing. Why can't we view the tasks for a PBS remote? The release notes state that you can see them, just not from within the actual remote itself. You have to go to the remote section above, then click on tasks, and then you have to filter by remote to actually see the tasks that will run against your PBS. This isn't a showstopper, obviously, and clearly the data is there, it's just not easily accessible, and it should be. I love that they're getting PBS fully integrated, but just know it's not nearly as baked as the PVE remotes yet. Now let's talk about updates, because there's still a lot of improvements to be made. Here's the deal. While PDM now gives you a specific section for managing updates, it's not holistic in any way. It's just collecting all of your disparate nodes and showing you their individual update status. I applaud this, but to be a real update management platform, you should be able to manage updates across multiple nodes at once, not one at a time. And PDM lacks any sort of baseline management or level configuration that you would find in other enterprise management systems like vCenter. Also, and this is a small thing, PDM's update management is in a separate location from these updates, and that seems weird to me. If I were to have built the update management component for PDM, it wouldn't have been nested under remotes or configurations. It would be a top-line section like SDN is, and it would contain all supported Proxmox-related systems. Update management is hard. I get that. And centralized update management is a net new for Proxmox. Xbox server solutions as a whole, but they have some big shoes to fill when it comes to this. If you look at the big closed sourced hypervisors on the market like VMware and Nutanix, they have respectively put a lot of thought and effort into vulnerability and patch management for their respective systems and have leaned heavily on automation for that so that from an administrative perspective, it's a rather painless activity. I love what I'm seeing and I hope there's more to come for patch management in the future PDM releases. One last thing that gets me riled up in PDM is the migration functionality, something that I had hoped that they'd have fixed in the version 1.0 release, but haven't, so let's talk about it. We were all collectively excited when PDM received the ability to migrate workloads between disparate systems. How cool is it that you don't need to build a cluster to move workloads to a different PVE host, right? Well, the devil is still in the details. For example, let's say storage backends are the same for both hosts, but the hardware is incompatible because you have configured your VM to use an AMD chip on one host, but the other is Intel. Well, that'll fail too. None of this is checked before you attempt to move a workload, and that's a problem. Workload migration inter-host in PDM is a seriously cool feature, but it's still very half-baked. I know there are plenty of reasons why they're doing what they're doing, but it doesn't help the fact that they make zero pre-checks for compatibility before you attempt to transfer, and there absolutely should be. The system knows the configurations of both hosts and the VM itself, and compatibility testing should 100% happen before that transfer occurs. I had really hoped this would be solved before version 1.0 was released, but it's still not. Overall though, PDM is still really shaping up to be something special. And while there's still a long way to go, they've made some incredible progress in a very short time. And let's not forget, PDM is free. Assuming you don't mind clicking through repeated subscription status warnings, something that other enterprise centralized management consoles are not, and that is a big deal. I'm still incredibly bullish on PDM and the work that Proxmox Server Solutions is doing. And I can't wait for further improvements down the road. If you are not running PDM in a container on one of your PDE hosts by at this point, you should be. You'll be glad you did. And friends, that will do it for this video. If you liked it, throw us a sub and a like. Get in the comments if you have something to say, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.